This video shows the design and analysis of a gantry crane. Hello, my name is Anjana Suresh. Today, my teammates and I are going to show you the design of a gantry crane on SolidWorks and the analysis on Abacus. A gantry crane consists of three main parts, the frame, the hoist and the hook. I was responsible for designing the hoist. The hoist consists of roller cylinders, plates, a box, a motor and a pulley. The design of each part and the analysis is discussed. The designing of the roller cylinder on SolidWorks is done by drawing a simple circle and extruding the same using the extrude bose feature. These are the dimensions of the roller cylinder. The plate is a simple square structure that is placed on either side of the roller cylinder. These are the dimensions of the plate. The box is a simple structure that is placed below the plate and the roller cylinders to provide support to the entire assembly. There is an opening at the bottom of the box for the motor and the pulley to sit. These are the basic dimensions of the box. This is the motor which sits inside the box. The function of the motor is for the working of the pulley and the hook. It consists of a motor shaft on which the pulley sits. The pulley is drawn by first drawing the entire cross-sectional area and then using the revolve bows feature. Additional pins are drawn to hold the entire hoist assembly together. This is the crane this is the crane hoist assembly. As you can see all the parts are shown. You can see the two roller cylinders, the two plates, the pins to hold the entire structure together, the box and inside you can also see the motor along with the pulley. Now moving on to the analysis on Abacus. Analysis on Abacus was done for a 2 ton load that is equivalent to 17,700 newtons. The analysis of the box. Here high areas of load, high areas of stress can be observed by applying the load. <clears throat> Next comes the roller cylinder. At one end the roller cylinder is fixed and the other end the load is applied. Here the stress areas can be seen. The plate. The top of the plate is fixed whereas the load is applied on the bottom of the plate downwards. The stress, the stress areas are highest around the holes. The motor shaft bears the highest amount of load. Hence high areas of stress can be seen around the motor shaft. This area of the pulley bears the highest stress because this is the area which bears the highest load. This is the analysis on the entire hoist. The roller cylinders are fixed and the, and the load is applied on the bottom of the box. It is also applied on the pulley because this is the part that carries the highest amount of load. As it can be seen, each part, each part of the hoist has undergoes some stress and the highest amount of displacement is seen on the pulley and the bottom of the box. Now I pass it on to my teammates to describe their parts and the final assembly. This part of the video explains about the analysis done on the frame of the crane. The parts were created in SOLIDWORKS. This is the beam which was created in simple extrude command from the sketch. Then comes the top pillar of the frame which has two rectangular tubes welded together and a top surface which holds the beam in place. Then comes the bottom pillar which again contains the same rectangular tubes and a C-section at the bottom before under which the wheels are placed in order to move the grain. The nuts and the bolts were created using SOLIDWORKS toolbox having a diameter of 7 by 8 inches. The last part is the pin which is used to lock the top and bottom pillar at a suitable distance. The material used for all the parts is mild steel. 
For the analysis of the beam, first a sketch was created using a 2D wire. The properties of mild steel were added to the material. As only bending analysis was performed, the elasticity and plasticity were defined. The eye section profile was assigned to the sketch in order to get imitate the beam we have. Then after meshing the part, we get the following results, which shows that the stress and displacement were maximum at the center of the beam. The next part is the bottom bill, which was imported in step format from SOLIDWORKS after applying the necessary loads and boundary conditions to the bottom bill, we get the following results which show us the displacement of the bottom pillar and the stresses which are concentrated around the whole of the pillar. The next part is the pin which was analyzed by assigning a circular profile to the sketch These are the loads and boundary conditions applied to the pin. The results show us that both maximum displacement and stresses occur around the center of the pin. But the stresses don't exceed the elastic limit of the material. This is a top pillar which holds the beam. This was also important in step format from SOLIDWORKS as the shape is a little complicated. The TET mesh was used. The encaster boundary conditions were applied at the lowest hole of the pillar and the load was applied uniformly on the top surface where the beam rests. These results were obtained after the analysis which show us both the stresses and the displacement. Finally, the assembly was also analyzed as a whole using TET mesh. Gives us the following mesh for the part. Loads and boundary conditions were applied accordingly. The final results show us that maximum stress was observed to be under the elastic limits and few millimeters of displacement was observed. My name is Tony Verghese and uh, my job as part of the project was to design the hook and the pulley assembly for the gantry crane. And I started off by designing the hook and this, I just first created the section first followed by a 3D sketch of the circles and then use the boundary surface option to extrude along the way and finally created uh, a small cross section for the shaft to go through and after that I went on to design the plate the two cover plates on either side of the pulley and these are the dimensions of the cover plate and there were two of these on either side of the pulley and hook assembly and after that, I designed the plate links. These are assembled outside the pulleys in order to provide support for the shafts and either of them go on each side of the cover plates. Followed by that, I designed the pulley sheave. This is a component through which the crane wire goes through and we have a pulley shaft which goes through the center this was created by first creating the cross-sectional area and then revolving it around to get the cross-section of the pulley and followed by that I went on to create the hooks the hook shaft and a small shaft as which acts as a support shaft so this is the large shaft for the pulley sheave which goes through the center of it and finally, I went on to complete the assembly of all the parts in SOLIDWORKS. This is the entire assembled parts. As you can see, you have the support shafts, the cover plates, the plate links inside. 
and then you have the pulley sheave and then finally the hook at the bottom so this entire assembly was designed to for a hook load of about two tons and the analysis was completed in abacus these are the abacus analysis results for the components of the pulley assembly and here you have the plate link the material applied was mild steel and loaded with two tons which is equivalent to about 19,700 newtons and you can see some heavy stress values around the portion where the pulley shaft goes through and the hook shaft here you have the cover plate again you see some heavy stress values around the pulley shaft and the hook shaft but there's no uh, great deformation here you have the pulley and you have some heavy stress values around the region where the wire goes through and finally you have the hook and again you have some heavy uh, stress values around the portion where uh, the crane rope is supposed to hang about the load.